Water power swallowing, water bottle, don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful, homie, you spilling it. Welcome, welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesday's webcast. I am here always on this journey with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hey, everyone. I can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica, because she is awesome. And today, we have the pleasure of having yet another guest that has taken the time out of their schedule to come to us all the way from the motherland. Today, we have Mr. Leonard Shane Quarty, who is the coordinating or the current coordinator of the African Water Justice Network. And it is such a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, We've talked and spoken with some of your colleagues in the past, and I'm so glad to maintain that connection with Africa and my brothers and sisters there. So it's just very important to have you on the show, and we really appreciate you taking the time out. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and this platform to further advance our message. Uh, I'm very grateful. You know, we talk a lot on the show about how uh, water connects us all and how a lot of us, our struggles are really mirrored across the um, across the world, how things that are happening in Detroit are definitely happening there where you live and um, in around the world. So it's really important, I think, for us to con- to make those connections with our viewers and, and show them and uh, and be able to talk about them. Absolutely. And I sense a short show. I'm going to jump right in. Um, could you tell us about the Africa Water Justice Network and their work a little bit? Can we start there? Okay. So the Africa Water Justice Network is the is the regional platform uh, or coalition of uh, several national anti privatization of water networks uh, on the African continent. Uh, since the days of the structural adjustment, so uh, you are looking at the late 90s, early 2001, there was the push to privatize uh, a lot of uh, the national uh, water utilities here on the, on the, on, on the African continent. And of course, uh, there was massive uh, public uproar and uh, resistance. So this resistance led into several national movements. And I mean, for close to about two decades, uh, these movements have been working uh, on 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 their own. So uh, last year, 2022, uh, during the World Water Forum, there was a counter forum uh, known as the Alternative World Water Forum. Uh, it is now mm-hmm. called the People's Water Forum. Uh, but then mm-hmm. at that uh, alternative or counter forum, uh, the activists who came together joined in launching or establishing the Africa Water Justice Network. Uh, this uh, forum, the World Water Forum, happened here in Africa, in the uh, city of Dakar, and yeah. that was one of the legacies that uh, all the activists that came all over the continent, all across the world, left left behind. Uh, so uh, now the national efforts has been joined into a regional effort. Uh, and Great. so now the regional efforts basically helps with supporting uh, specific national efforts, especially where they require some as- assistance, and then also okay. knowledge exchange in terms of what is working uh, or what works best. Uh, that is from experiences in other countries. Uh, so we have been uh, facilitating. Uh, 
all of that. And most importantly, uh, the aspect that we call water justice literacy. Uh, so mm. we have the Water Saves Lives webinar that we have been, we have been run, running. Uh, because over time, there is some sort of a cultural change. Uh, people are being programmed into believing that uh, you have to pay for uh, some of these basic necessities like water. Uh, even though people pay through their taxes. Now, yeah. the little disposable income left with families uh, are, are also being taken forcefully uh, because if they don't pay, uh, they are disconnected. Um, and there are a lot of very worrying stories mm -hmm, no. in terms of access on, on, on the continent. And then it's also part of the colonial legacy here, uh, which has continued uh, in terms of the differentiation of communities, the elites, and then the struggling. Uh, so the, you have the best setup and systems and distribution to the elite areas, and uh, the 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 and you, when you look at the peri urban as they call it here, the peri urban areas are uh, not so much struggling struggling with uh, access. It used to be that the um, the colonial settlements where you have some of the colonial administrators and their staff staying as the well served. Uh, areas now it is the local elite you so in areas where uh, you, you you find them that's where you have the best services and in areas where you have uh, ordinary people uh, not so not so uh, and you can also look at it in terms of the urban rural divide for most of the countries on the of the continent so despite the challenges of urban, the urban areas, the rural areas have the worst experiences. Because for example, mm -hmm. in Ghana where I am based, I mean, there, 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 there is national budget provisions for urban water provision. But then when you look at the situation for rural water, uh, they have to wait for donors. They have to wait for charities uh, mm. to come and dig uh, boreholes to uh, provide all kind of. Uh, I mean, so those areas are like completely divested in, and um, yes, they get neglected. neglected. Yeah, totally neglected. neglected. So these are these are many of the motivational issues that is fully uh, participation in the Africa Water Justice Network. So it's not only colonialism, but it's almost like they conduct the country like a, a caste system, like the, the they, those that they deem the least uh, beneath them, they don't have access to their basic needs. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that is the situation now. But then now, the key distinguishing uh, factor is the ability to pay. So mm, okay. maybe by reason of education, by reason of income, you have uh, a certain uh, group of people living in, in the well-served areas. And by those same reasons, you have others uh, located elsewhere. And... Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we've been fighting against the attempt to privatize because mm -hmm. these are some of the distinctions that the private company makes in providing access. But mm -hmm. then now, even the public uh, providers are, uh, are, are making same calculations uh, because now there's pressure. Uh, the, the, there's pressure on the public uh administrators or bureaucrats mm -hmm. to fend for themselves. Mm. If, if I may explain, you realize that the 
budgetary allocation from national government that should go to some of these utilities uh, are not adequate. And mm. if anything, okay. the, 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 the quantum has been re reducing over time. And uh, there are only two ways they can raise revenue to survive. Uh, mm. One is through tariff, and then one is through uh, subventions from the government, that is the people's taxes. <laughs> These ones okay. are not coming, so uh, the, the utility managers also are forced to use some of the draconian measures of the market, of the private sector, yeah. uh, on the people. Uh, so it's causing the stratification in terms of uh, certain areas. Mm -hmm. They will stay for a week without uh, water flow. Uh, certain areas. Wow. You can yes. Absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. Oh, no, no. There, there are areas that <laughs> have stayed for years without, <laughs> without water. Oh, my God. But then that is also bringing, bringing on uh, another practice or culture. Now people are forced to fend for themselves. Yeah. So, okay. so because the state is, 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 not, is not available or providing this resource, people choose the alternatives best available to them. So where somebody has a little income, or a group of people have a little come together and then uh, dig a borehole for themselves. Mm. Uh, so you have uh, uh, the situation where uh, uncontrollably uh, boreholes are being dug. And a lack of water infrastructure. With, it's, yeah. a, it's a health crisis that that, um, that, that causes. And you know that and we all know that anytime you privatize water, they, no matter what, it's going to fall on the rate payers, the people who have to, who, you know, the bills are going to arrive at their houses. So that it always falls on those people and to have them yeah. still be paying for the water. But yeah, it's, it's the water infrastructure is not there. That's totally not only new. that, but what happens to areas where they have are prone to more drought even if they make a borehole they may not be able to drill deep enough to get water yeah, and so, it's, so, it's just inhuman yeah, so so it's it's, um, it's a migration from those areas uh into the yes. cities and particularly in accra the city the capital city here uh Basically, the girl child, a lot of them, because of some of these issues, it's affecting agriculture up north. It is affecting uh, families, uh, household income. And therefore, you have this migration from uh, the northern part of the country here to the urban uh, cities here, where they hope to find opportunities but they come and there's nothing and they languish on the streets and uh, uh, the skies without anything over over their heads and you see some of the pictures from the media and it's very very uh, worrying uh, yeah. uh, lots 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 of lots of uh, young girls and young boys coming down uh, and nothing for them to do because of uh, I mean, I mean, if all 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 all, all things being well, uh, if there is proper infrastructure provision, I mean, that part of the country could get water from the south. I mean, it could be pumped up there. Their farms could be irrigated. They will be able to grow their crops. And they don't have to do. But then some of these conditions manifest in very challenging uh, real life situations for people. Yeah. Real life um, and death situations. It is. It is. It's inhumane conditions. Um, could you tell our listeners a bit about how your work is coordinating 
present in emerging movements around the intersection of what the water struggles that are going on in Africa? So basically, uh, the key issue uh, that has motivated our, our organizational work has been the threat of water privatization. Uh, and as I made reference to, uh, this began in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, so there was this push to uh, privatize, I mean, shift the, the, the responsibility of government, which is to provide water, shift that responsibility to the private sector. And it was not mm -hmm. only for water, but then for most social services, uh, mm -hmm. like education. Leaving them unaffordable for everyone. And then also, and then also health. Uh, but then uh, water was the, the, the sector or the commodity that drew the most, uh, the harshest response in terms of the attempts, the privatization uh, attempts. Uh, and people come into this movement uh, based on a lot of uh, different a variety of, of concerns and, 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 and challenges. Uh, so uh, in, in our work, you realize that you have a lot of gender, uh, gender activists, uh, and they are looking at it from the perspective of the lack of water on, the, uh, on women. Uh, and girls, uh, and you you have to see it in this part of the world to to to, to see the connectivity. I mean, how how the, the, the I mean, water and the gender uh, disparity, patriarchy. Yeah, yeah. So so you realize that uh, for most households that are disconnected or not connected to the uh, national supply system. The absence of that connection, it is the female child that replaces, <laughs> that has to, 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 to replace. Go and get the water. That. Yes. So a lot of the time in the mornings and then uh, in the evening. Uh, so before a girl gets, gets to school, very tired, and unable to, to participate in school, school activities. Uh, after school also, they have to serve that same need uh, because the households are not connected. And so and, and, uh, culturally, the way we have developed, the lot uh, uh, falls on uh, the, 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 the women and girls to bring in, to bring in the water. And that's something that the the government should be providing. The absence of Absolutely. that places this difficulty on on women, on women and uh, girls. Uh, so a lot of the uh, gender based groups that we work work with are particularly interested in this particular issue, and the focus is on increasing government budgetary spending to prove, improve infra infrastructure, uh, yeah. to, to improve uh, infrastructure. Uh, also, the other groups that uh, we work with are the uh, environmental uh, groups. Um, I mean, mining is a very big issue here. Uh, because for most of the countries here, the national uh, revenues uh, come from mining activities. Um, yeah. and the Which pollutes effect, the water. Yeah. It falls on, yeah. the small side, it then, falls on young people too. too. Uh, but then uh, the effect of the mining activity on some of the water bodies are very concerning. Uh, for yeah. example, I can give you uh, a cup of chocolate drink and then fetch 
uh, water from the Birim River here from the eastern region, and you cannot tell the difference. Uh, wow. <laughs> you cannot tell the difference. Uh, oh. as, and that's as, because as, of the mining. As a, as a result. So, so basically, um, and these, these uh, water bodies serve a lot of unconnected and unserved communities. Public and, health crisis. And, 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 and the mining activities of some of these groups uh, deprive uh, a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot of communities. Not only you know that, we see uh, that in. I'm yeah. sorry, we yeah. we see that happen to indigenous communities here. They mine mm -hmm. in like in on their reservations. They in all of these you know the places where they go, they fish, they hunt, the stuff that's like so important to them and their families. It's how they you know they survive. And they go, they mine in their communities, and the water is like that. They have to go and have water from, you know, have to take their truck and water drums and go find water somewhere else because they've ruined the water around the exact same thing. Exactly. Mining companies are beasts when it comes exactly. to trashing exactly. Exactly. the environment uh, and, and making people they, around it sick. They together with the uh, local collaborators here and uh, I mean, the the the, yeah. the the profit gain for a few group is depriving a lot of people uh, from their uh, access access yeah. access to water. The other groups uh, that you find within our organizing work are those who feel affected uh, that the the cultural spaces, religious spaces are being encroached upon. Uh, uh, so uh, recently in Nigeria, uh, a bill that was before the uh, legislature was defeated. And we had a huge uh, celebration and uh, jubilation of it here. Uh, because it was called the Natural Resources Bill, uh, also, yes. Uh, but then they were seeking to entrust into, a very, uh, into the hands of a very few people the ability to transfer uh, uh, rights over certain water bodies, uh, systems, and what have you, into private hands. Uh, so it means that a particular stream, a particular river, whether they are sacred or not, overnight, could just be uh, given out uh, just like that. Uh, so, so these people are... Uh, uh, and, and the people and, who live around that do feel spiritually connected to the, to the water. To it, exactly. Water. Absolutely. Exactly. So these are some of the concerns. But then the key, the key motivating rallying issue has been the privatization issue. And of course, the privatization issue also connects all of these issues because yeah. the, uh, there is into when, when, when these resources are in private land, we cannot demand those rights that are due. No, us. and you can't protect it. And the corporations aren't going to protect it. Exactly. They don't care what happens to it. Exactly. If if it's if uh, if it's a commons, a public commons, exactly. the public is going to protect it. Exactly. It loves it. It's spiritually exactly. connected to it. Exactly. But a corporation does not have that same thing. They don't care what happens to it. They don't. Exactly. They don't care. It's just an end to a mean, a means to an end for them. Yeah. It's exactly. it's not about preservation of life, of about dignity that people deserve to have affordability of a basic necessity. It's just about how can they make a profit off of it? Mm -hmm. as, 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 they won't exactly. protect it the same way we do. A, yeah. So we, we believe that when this resource is in the commons, uh, and, for, and for now, based on our own, uh, the colonial legacy here, uh, the only space where we realize this co common uh, with a lot of difficulties is the state. <laughs> yes. 
is, yeah. is, is so. So Absolutely. when this is held by the state, at least uh, citizens can demand accountability from governments. They can demand mm -hmm. their rights from governments. Yeah. Then they cannot demand they, so, those same rights from the private sector or from the market because they don't have that that relationship with them. So no. uh, all, all these issues have sort of uh, uh, come together to make the anti-privatization movement here uh, very strong. Specifically in Kenya, uh, we have a lot of actions by the Nairobi uh, Water Justice Platform, uh, for example, okay. uh, pushing against a privatization bill, uh, which wants to privatize uh, both social services and public amenities beyond water. Uh, yeah. uh, and, and the push there has been big uh, with lend support to, to, to that. Uh, in Cape Town, recently, there's been the equity before XMAS uh, campaign. Uh, and Cape, Cape Town is, is a place where you see some of these most draconian measures. Uh, yes. So for, for, for example, uh, pensioners, uh, old folks, basically are threatened with eviction from their homes if they don't pay. Uh, what if they don't pay for the um if they don't pay for their water if, if they don't pay for for uh, uh arrears uh water 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 bill uh, arrears i mean they're they're they are practically uh, threatened uh with with evictions and then they have these uh what That's... they call the flow restrictors that they put in the meters there and it restricts uh a specific number of liters of water per household. So they ration irris it. Irrespective of the number of people uh, living in there. The house. But then basically it's based on uh, the history of one's payment. So basically, <laughs> basically uh, using people's financial status or means uh, for that discrimination. Uh, but but I mean, uh, just last. Talk about waging war against the poor, like exactly, like... exactly, 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 exactly. So they they had the equity before Xmas campaign. Uh, that campaign is still going on. Uh, and seeing of the mayor of the city uh, to attend to some of these concerns. Uh, mm -hmm. do away with the flow restrictors, uh, stop harassing pensioners uh, yeah. with eviction, uh, and, 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 and a number of other concerns uh, that, that they have. In uh, Nigeria, in Akiti State, there's also the threat of water privatization. Uh, but they have a situation where uh, most of the uh, facilities in the common that uh, are used to uh, supply water to our soul so that everybody has access have uh, been, been left to deteriorate. So some of these reservoirs are without water, uh, some are crumbling. And so there too you have the practice where now it's everyone mm -hmm. for themselves. So people are digging their own uh, boreholes to survive. Uh, so if you don't and That's have... what happens when you take a commons away from somebody. And exactly. I'm willing to bet, as we're talking about all these connections, I'm willing to bet the same corporations, they're trying to privatize water. It's here. The same yes. exact same corporations. Like here, we've got these monster corporations like Veolia and other, other like water privatization companies. Yes. That come in and try to, you know, buy up whole water systems. Oh yes, I'm like Veolia. Yeah, I'm yeah, willing to bet they're the exact same privatization privatization corporations doing that. There, willing to bet. Absolutely, they're trying to make exactly. a global monopoly. Absolutely, exactly. Uh, and talking about Veolia, 
Uh, we received news just last week that they are being kicked out of Niger. Uh, Niger is one of the countries here that recently um, uh, had a, I mean, right had a change of government through yes. uh, a military coup. So as a result of the coup, there are several changes happening there. Um, mm. I mean, we do not stand for uh, such uh, changes uh, mm. like the military uh, because we believe in people's power. Uh, because uh, at times the military can become the worst, worst oppressors. Uh, but then uh, they are having some changes. There. So these are the uh, countries that used to be uh, ruled uh, by France or countries mm, okay, that have their okay. colonial, uh, had their colonial master as uh, France. That's where, uh, so, uh, and the colonial uh, court hasn't been, uh, that is for a lot of the uh, Francophone countries, uh, the, the, the colonial court hasn't been severed yet. Uh, it is now that some of the countries are forcibly doing that, like Mali, Niger, I mean, France created the opportunity for Viola to move into uh, some of these uh, uh, post-colonial countries uh, and then just take over their water systems. Uh, so uh, from... And the transportation the, systems. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, mm-hmm. They're monster so, company. Just uh, horrible, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So this, this, these are some of the things that uh, we are engaging here. Uh, and then also I mentioned uh, the water uh, literacy program, the Water Saves Life uh, uh, program that we have, or webinar. That it sharing of webinar. knowledge does save lives. Yes, because interestingly, I mentioned this is also a cultural fight uh, because over time uh, the population have been programmed, some some of the population have been programmed into believing that, uh, I mean, if you pay, what, uh, they, they have some, some expressions that they use uh, to just bring people in. Uh, for example, uh, you pay for, 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 quality. <laughs> so if you are not uh, bringing money out of your pocket to pay for water, it means that uh, the, poor services that, the poor services that you are receiving is deserved. Uh, uh, and so there is the need to also culturally respond to some of these, uh, some of these happenings. So the water literacy program, the uh, the water saves lives webinar, help with that. So with that, with this, we invite. Uh, uh, I mean, that we 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 dealt with a number of topics uh, that we bring in people with experiences to speak on these, on these, on these topics, but all with the purpose of challenging the narrative that. If you don't privatize, you will not get the best. If you don't privatize, then you deserve what what you what what you have. Uh, we believe ordinary people are already paying for water through their taxes, yeah. uh, directly yeah. and indirectly, and these services uh, should 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 get to people, yeah. uh, and it's a travesty that. <laughs> This is not happening. Yeah, absolute travesty. Yeah, it's absolutely not fair. Um, I I love the way that we that that you connected all of this. Is there um and all the different places? Is there any um can is are, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up? Is anything that we didn't? So it, it's 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 been. 
before. Um, as you in this part, uh, for, for most most activities, so over time people are not able to continue in this lane, and um, because now if you talk about civil society, uh, the civil space, um, it that the space is being captured, if not already captured, so. The voice, the voice, even within uh, this space, um, for for most of the spaces, are not independent uh, uh, because the key thing now is defined by the donors. So if the don if the donor does not like this message at this time, then you so, don't get water. Don't get water. Uh, folks just don't get water. Don't get they, water. Don't, they don't. They don't. No, I mean, organizing to challenge the the the, the, the situation. Um, okay. This is supposed to be done within the uh, civil society space, but then that space is also being appropriated, uh, and co-opted <laughs> by, mm -hmm. by by those with uh, the power and, and, and money. Uh, so that's that's it's 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 very difficult for most of the activists uh, down here uh, uh, because uh, in Ghana, for for example, uh, most of the messages that you find people pushing are more messages endorsed by the donors. Uh, mm. Of course, if you are if you, if you, if you cannot go to most. Most donors here with a message of um, water justice. Mm. Okay. Okay. You can do so if, in your estimation, the private sector can bring about water justice. Mm. Uh, because we've also seen that. Which it never would. Yeah. And it never will. Yes, but then they, 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 right. they, both, right. they, they are co opting some of these. Uh, uh, the spaces. messages and uh, language and uh, finding mm. that no, the best means to ensure uh, justice, what a justice is through uh, market approaches. <laughs> they, 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 Never. they tell you that. Uh, but then resisting. They got to set that narrative, right? They have to set that narrative to a whole bunch of people so that they can do what they want. So then, you know, you've, that's we've seen it. Over and over and over again when we talk to people. Actually, going with That's a message, it. message that these communities water is being take, taken over, and they don't like it, and they are coming together to have a march to express their concern, their displeasure. Most organizations most so will just sh uh, just shy away from that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, people within that space uh, are giving all kind of tags. Uh, yeah, they're doing a lot to uh, squash the resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Because associating with you also means that uh, uh, certain people cannot go back to the other side, so they prefer to be there. So these are some of the uh, practical uh, challenges. But then we are seeing uh some 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 changes and uh, uh, the situation is becoming at least better than it used to before it, it used to uh because now communities are mobilizing on their home and then also uh, approaching uh organizations such as ours and, uh, or even at a national level for support uh because you cannot Play nice when you have no access to water. That's right. Uh, you, uh, you, you have to come out eventually. You have to organize. Uh, yeah. And we have organizations uh, such as you, you yourself giving us this platform to uh, share our message. Uh, the Wallis Foundation and, 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 and a few uh, who are providing some support for our work here. 
Uh, so grateful for those um, organizations and um, for the work that you do. Uh, I think it's really important for people to understand how it's all really connected, how our water struggles here um, against privatization and the water struggles there are um, by the same entities and um, and and yeah. they're monster entities that do not care about the people or the planet. Uh, global solidarity means demanding that the water be a commons for all of us and um, and being able to <clears throat> come together in movements um, to to stop that is so important. And you're right, we can't play nice. We can't play nice when our kids don't have nothing to drink. We um we we have to we have to show solidarity with each other and we have to care for each other in these moments. Um, really really appreciate uh, this conversation and being able to share it. I really uh, appreciate our friend Nia and Vera for connecting us um, and uh, all of those things. Do you have any final thoughts, Nicole, before we wrap up? Um, I just wanted um, to I just send wanted to a send message a out to our viewers. Um, um, this, is this is important. I don't, I don't, I don't hear, hear how you find how a way to get involved. Way to get involved. Just get involved, just get involved in some type of way. Type of whether way. it's whether it's um, um, connecting with these connecting organizations, with these organizations even, at a global even at a global level, level whether, it's, whether it's letter writing, letter whether, writing it's, whether it's, it's, it's direct, direct action, direct action in solidarity, in solidarity but do something. Do something. We can't just we can't sit idle. Sit idle, idle. That's right. All right, we have to care for each other. Thank you so much, so much. Leo. So much. We appreciate you. That's, so much. that's a great way to kind of wrap it up. Uh, Nicole, uh, showing global solidarity to our viewers. Thank you so much for tuning in and supporting every week. Please share this. Um, knowledge is power. I think Leo said that a handful of times, but knowledge really, really is power. Knowing, talking about it, sharing it, um, and, and keeping it on a, as a global conversation. Uh, that's what solidarity looks like, indeed. Thank you, everyone. Until next time, try to take care of each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye-bye. Be careful, homie. You're spilling it.